they should do, be pleased, but realize that this is a very good team you're playing, and you've got to be ready in the second period to play it just the same way. You can't let CM weigh you down. They've got another gear to play in. Coming up, uh, a very special uh, bit of awards coming up, the Malloy Awards, Bob Norton. They are for sportsmanship. And as soon as the teams come off the ice, we will... You clearly were never a candidate for any of those awards. I'm, you don't think I'm a sportsman? <laughs> yeah, don't. I'm teasing. <laughs> don't make me pull your jersey over your head no, in the booth here. absolutely not. <laughs> well, Norty, that, I think there were a lot of people who came in here expecting Catholic Memorial to build a three-goal lead yeah, in the first I didn't, period. I, I didn't. I thought that I've watched this tournament all the way along. I've seen the... See him be upset by Marlon Catholic. I've seen you watch Hingham play. Hingham plays a, a very tough independent schedule. They're not going to get intimidated. I thought maybe the, the location might intimidate them a little bit. They haven't been here before. But after a little nervousness in the first uh, few minutes of the game, they really took a 2CM as that period went on. That was not a fluky one to nothing lead. I thought that uh, uh, Hingham dominated that period, not by a lot. And as I said, one of the things I've noticed about CM is that they, in these tournaments, I don't think they're talent-wise that much better individually than other teams, but they have a lot of depth through three and four lines and three sets of defense, and they keep coming at you three periods worth of hockey, so you got to be ready to meet that every period. Hingham met it successfully the first period. They have to meet it again the second. Well, a lot of times we refer to you as we wait for the awards to start here. We refer to you as the hockey professor, but... You have a, a, a really good, distinguished coaching background, and, of course, you're, you're back at it again with your son this year. What are these coaches right now? What are Bill Hanson, Tony Messina telling the team? You know, I'm sure that Bill Hanson used the word respect for the other opponent coming in. I bet that's coming back up. Well, I, you know, I think that Tony, uh, he, he's obviously got to tell his team, we played real well that period, but we got to do it again. This game's a long, long way from over. we got to really commit ourselves to that same effort again. And, and Billy's got to say, look, we, we didn't play our best game that first period. We've got to spend more time down there in, take advantage of our chances, uh, and they need to play with just a little more intensity and fire, and they've got it in them. There you see the folks coming out for the sportsmanship, the Malloy you know, Sportsmanship Awards. Yeah, you know, I did help my son coach up at Tilton School this year, mostly by being on the road, which has kept me out of his way, and I didn't have to bother him. So I, but I ended up doing what I did back when I coached at UNH, watching high school kids play, and what a kick that was this year. Well, you made us more valuable for us here tonight. Let's go down to Bill Gain. Ladies and gentlemen, 12 years ago, James Malloy, a great friend of high school hockey and an outstanding educator, passed away. Jim Malloy served as teacher and administrator for over 37 years in the Everett Public Schools. And during this time, he served a total of 24 years as head ice hockey coaches at three MIAA member schools, Dominic Savio, Marlin Catholic, and Everett High School, and he is a member of the Massachusetts State Coaches Hall of Fame. Next to his family, Jim's great love was ice hockey. And as MIAA Ice Hockey Committee Chair and statewide hockey observer, his legacy was marked by the promotion of and dedication to sportsmanship in the game. To that end, the Massachusetts State Hockey Coaches Association and the MIAA have established the James F. Malloy Sportsmanship Award to be presented annually to the schools that most positively reflect this allegiance to sportsmanship. At this time, we are recognizing four schools from over 240 MIAA member schools that have demonstrated these fine ideals and are deserving of this great award. First, our winners from the girls' ice hockey programs. I'd like to recognize Waltham High School girls' hockey program, and we ask that Jim's grandchild, Bobby Andrews, presents the award to Waltham High School. Thank you.
The next award to be presented to a girls ice hockey program to Hingham High School. We're pleased to have Jim Malloy's daughter, Maureen Jackman, make the presentation. Now at this time... Once again, welcome back to the garden. We are in our first intermission here of the game and we'll have a few moments to step out and talk a little bit more about the MIA. The Deputy Director, Bill Gain, joins me here in our first intermission. And Bill, uh, once again, welcome back to the broadcast. Always good to see you and your, and your troops and, and the great day that we have here uh, to just showcase the boys' hockey. And girls, great. This is a big day for us. Uh, it's a culmination of an entire tournament season, but it's uh, obviously an exciting atmosphere, and we're pleased to be able to bring such a superb venue to the kids for this experience. Well, you're talking about that, and we're going to continue with this theme all the way through our broadcast here tonight, but uh, what takes the, the preparation to put this in is just so much, and you guys must be right at the end of your ropes here after a really very, very busy postseason. Preparation, uh, you know, allows success to occur, and uh, we put a lot of time and effort into it. We have a tremendous uh, staff, and I want to highlight that uh, almost all of our staff is volunteer educators, uh, principals, athletic directors, and uh, coaches that to serve throughout the 375 member schools, and uh, really are the people in the trenches who do the job. Bill, the, there's a lot that goes into it, the, the scores, the results, and all the rest of it. But some of the things that you're trying to teach here for the fans, the students, the players, the coaches, is the sportsmanship angle. And that's very, very important to the MIA. I'd like to ask you to expand upon that a little bit, if you would. Great. Um, and I'm glad you asked that. Um, and I'm glad you used the word what we're trying to teach, because um, we're in educational athletics, and uh, it's exactly what our charge is. And uh, when we talk about Sportsmanship, it's been established as a, an absolute priority um, within the games we play, respect for self and respect for a pro pro opponent. Um, we we kind of put together a, um, a three-fold plan, and, and that plan consists of uh, extensive programming on what it's all about and why, the rationale why the sh respect should uh, be demonstrated, but we also uh, complement it by policy, that's rules and regulations. That means that we're going to hold our people accountable uh, for different behaviors. Uh, and then um, we feel it's uh, responsible on our half to give and provide recognition. So we will do, uh, for example, at this state final today, we'll have a major, major presentation of uh, sportsmanship awards to the schools that demonstrate their greatest allegiance to uh, sportsmanship. So uh, a, a comprehensive program, one in which um, we've been at for some time. The TD Garden teams are coming on the ice for the second period. Let's look at some of the stats for period number one. Just the one goal where Higgum leads one nothing. Yeah, it was the 32nd goal of the year for Tim Driscoll. It came at the 6.02 mark of the period. Connor Coveney and Steve Ballou were the assists. The terrific offense by both teams. This one comes out to the point. Coveney shoots, and he's 24 right there on the left side. Get that stick up and tip it in, and he gets it. Driscoll, goal number 32, 6.02. Coveney and Ballou with the helpers. Lots of opportunities for Hingham and for uh, Cat Memorial on the other end. This is one of Higgins' best opportunities where Eric Sherman had a walk-in just after he had a shot from the high slot. But a terrific period for Hingham, solid period for CM. You can see there with the shots on goal, Hingham with the advantage. I know that Coach Hanson liked to turn that around. Eric Sherman could have had a bucket load of goals there except for some of the good play by Tommy Knox. We'll come back with that second period. Just a moment, one to nothing Hingham. Once again, welcome back to the TD Garden. Greg Madden along with Bob Norton and our entire Comcast Network crew. Good to have everybody back together again, bringing you the excitement of the Division 1A championship here at the Garden. Uh, the Catholic beat the Archbishop Williams in the uh, Division 1 tournament. And Canton beat Newburyport in the uh, Division 2 tournament. 
We might need to get a medic up here for you. You're not sounding I'm in, fine. in your normal form. I'm fine. <laughs> At least you're looking good. Off the faceoff, team in white is Hingham. They lead here by the score of one to nothing on Tim Driscoll's 28th of the year. They wear white, Catholic Memorial wearing red. Longmeadow beats Situate to win the uh, Division Three tournament. Boy, updates and everything else. Here's a chance, Catholic Memorial tries to bring it in. They can't get too far. They'll return though. Here's a chance, glove, glove deflection on the shot that came from the far side off the stick of T.J. O'Brien. Very interesting to see how Hingham plays the first uh, few minutes of this period, whether they're able to build on their first period, <coughs> excuse me, momentum, or whether they allow Catholic Memorial to take the momentum to them. They really need to establish the play that they had in that first period and carry that over here in the first part of the second. Just keep it going, and CM's got to turn it around. Coveney took a hit at center ice. He sent it in. Here's a shot right on, and that's a bomb. That came from the right face-off circle off the stick of Ryan Linehan. And he put it right on goal. It was covered by Tommy Knox. One of the things you have to do here when you're playing CM is you just have not to be intimidated. You have to get after them and play hard. And you can't treat them like the fact that they've won 13 Division 1A state championships here at the Garden. You've got to believe that you're here for a reason, that you can play with them, and you're able to win the game. I thought we might see... The Knights come out here and thump a few bodies to get things going on the early on. They've been passive as far as the the physical side of their game has been so far. They try to walk it out in front. Everybody wearing a white jersey is there to meet them. And Hingham will skate it out to the neutral zone. With it is Fitzgerald. John on his off wing. Rolls the puck towards the side of the net. Sticked away by Knox. Off around to the yeah. near wing and then up the center ice once again with the puck is David Lazaro. That was not a good pass. The puck was on the sideboards and sort of a blind backhand flip to the right point and end up getting out of the zone and he loses possession. All possessions count. They want to give him away. Hingham nearly had the puck out of the zone. It was kept alive. Now they finally get it out. Fitzgerald wants to change it up. He'll roll it in. Right there. Tony Messina, the coach of Hingham will change five skaters as his team gets to the puck turns it over and keeps pressure on pitch forked up to the far side it's Hetnick he's able to clear the zone it bounces out in across the blue line puck set out all the way down now behind the cage in the Hingham zone putting pressure on again Lazaro David couldn't get to it he'll chase after it drops it down low for Colucci Colucci trying to cycle sends it down now they chase in after it there. Good pressure on Connolly. And then the puck pops out to center ice. Just a few minutes gone by here in the second period. One to nothing Hingham. It was the power play goal, the 28th of the year from Tim Driscoll. Well, it seems like there's kind of a lack of flow in this particular game. It's choppy. Well, you know, I don't think so. I, I mean, I think that both teams are uh, being careful about how they handle a puck and not just making careless passes because, they, you know, these kinds of situations is one and out. It's not as if you're playing best of seven here and you want to make sure that you make solid plays. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a, a, an idea to just commit, keep teams on the perimeter. Don't let them make moves to the middle of the ice and I mean, both teams have done a pretty good job of doing that. Puck goes all the way down, Catholic Memorial draws a whistle for icing and the faceoff will come in their own See, zone. I think both teams have done a good job, Hingham maybe a little bit better than CM, of reducing time and space that the other team has to make plays. So whenever CM gets the puck, there's a Hingham, per, Hingham defender, five team defense right at him, reducing his time and his space. And the same thing on the other side when Hingham gets it. Here's a chance, Harbourman go to the side of the net, they try to clear it away. CM battles for it there. It was Dorsey, another chance in front. And the Hingham faithful jumped to their feet as they thought they'd gotten the second goal here tonight. CM almost kicked it in their own net. Here's another chance out to center ice. Psychic had it knocked away around behind the net. After it there, Rapucci. And he slides it along the glass, comes out to center ice. And CM will reload and bank it.